lesson number nine is all going to be about VBA. VBA is a great tool that comes in handy and can perform tasks that Excel by itself cannot perform. Knowing a bit of VBA will take you a long way. And trust me, learning VBA is not that tough, even without any prior programming knowledge. I have learned most of my VBA from this amazing YouTube channel. Excel VBA is fun. Check it out. It's going to be worthwhile. Alright, let's start off. In today's video, I've got this data dump that I get from my ERP system on a weekly basis, which I've put on the sheet named data. This data dump is only for four products that aren't really doing well in the market and are being personally monitored by product managers to understand their sales strength. Now, what we want here is to have data for all four products on their respective sheets. Uh, let's see how to write the code now. First and foremost, we'd have to enter the VBA editor. You can either go to the developer tab and click on the Visual Basic button, or you can simply use the short keys Alt F11. Uh, under the Insert tab, you'll first have to insert a new module. Before writing the code, I prefer to have uh, these words option explicit on my code module. This basically forces you to declare variables. And declaring variables is a very good practice. If variables are not declared, they are automatically set as variant data type which can hold any kind of data but are the slowest and might uh, affect the code uh, performance for complex codes. So let's start by naming our uh, code, uh, naming our macro instance. I'm going to name it sub part sheets. As soon as you hit enter, you see this ending line automatically turn up. I generally prefer having comments that uh, state the time when the macro was made and even the purpose sometimes. This helps in the future when you are referring to a code that you have not used in a while uh, and may not remember what the code was exactly about. So I'll just uh, write a brief about it code copies data of all the parts on respective sheets. You can see that I've put a small post of here. The uh, line automatically turns green. It tells you that this line is now a comment and will not have any effect on the code. Now we will declare all the variables that we will be using. Then LR as integer. LR stands for last row. And again LR1 as integer. LR1 is again the last row, but I, uh, this will be the last row for the other sheets. C1 as integer. This is going to be my counter for the for loop. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to set all my worksheet objects uh, so that I can use it in the code later on, which becomes easier to read. Here you'll see it shortly. I've got my four parts, drop arms, tie rods, oil tanks, and wheels. So I'm going to use short forms for that. DA as worksheet. DA stands for drop arms. TR as worksheets. TR for tie rods. OT as worksheets. 
forty percent for oil tanks. We use as worksheets data as worksheet data as my main data sheet and bar as string. These are all the variables that I'm going to be using in this code. All right. Uh, my next line is going to be application dot screen updating is equal to false. So what this does, it it turns off the screen updating. It means till the time the code is not finished, your screen doesn't flicker. I also uh, suggest whenever you have any line of code which may potentially have a closing statement to it, you uh, might as well put it beforehand. For example, after the code is finished, I'm going to turn the screen updating uh, to true again. So before I, don't, I write any other code, I'll write that ending line application dot screen updating is equal to true. And then I'll go ahead and write the code in between so that I don't forget the ending line or later on. Now I'm going to set all my worksheet objects here. So set drop arm as this workbook dot sheets worksheets and the sheet name you have to be precise on the sheet names I'll set drop on as this workbook dot worksheets oh, I'm sorry uh, you have while you're setting a worksheet object you have to use the equal sign not, not as so I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna paste it five times for, for these five worksheets And next one is TR for tie rod. Okay, just tie rods. Then I have OD for oil tank. I'll change this to oil tanks. And then I've got wheels. Wheels. And my last one is data. This is my main sheet. Now all my worksheet objects have been declared. All right. The next line is going to be data dot activate. Just in case your data sheet is not activated, uh, this line will force it to be activated. So data basically stands for this workbook dot worksheet uh, inverted commas data. So this becomes very simpler to read. All right. Now uh, we'll have to find the last row of uh, the data which we have on the data sheet. So we have to find this row because this is going to be dynamic. This might uh, vary every time you download the file. So we, uh, I'm going to uh, start off with this variable LR. LR stands for last row. LR is equal to data dot cells. Data stands for this sheet. Now row index. Row index is rows dot count. Column index is the A column. You can also write one instead of A, the serial number of that column. Dot end into brackets Excel up dot row. So what this does is on the data sheet it counts all the rows. That is approximately 10 million rows. Uh, uh, then it, uh, from the end, it starts coming up till the time it finds the last cell that is non blank. And then it returns the row number of that. So if you want to test it out, you can uh, by pressing the F8 key, keep on coming down. 
and just hover your mouse point pointer it will show you row number 498 this 498 is basically the last row